everyone is staying safe. Since we can't go to church, we are doing it online. So we're bringing church to you. In 1 Corinthians 3.16, it says that we are God's temple and together we are that temple. So even though we are in our church where we usually are located. So let's get on with the lesson. God is faithful. God's word is our strength. God forgives. God is help. Jesus is king. God restores relationship. God is love. Jesus is compassionate. God is near. Jesus restores. Jesus is life. God's Spirit changes everything. This changes everything. Hey kids, welcome to Kids Church. We are super excited to have you here with us today. In fact, we want to talk to you about today's ponder point. It says, God is our help. How cool is that? Can you say that with us? Can you say, God is our help? I didn't quite hear you. Let's say it again really loud. God is our help. Yes, he is our help. In fact, it's incredible to think about how in our lives, God can help us with the small things and the big things. And God can help us as we worship him. So do you wanna worship today? I think we should. Let's stand up and let's worship God. Hey guys, it's game time. Aren't you excited? We're gonna play Beat the Screen. This means you will challenge the screen to see who wins. Our first game today is all about Fair Lady Hunter. This game is really similar to Rock, Paper, Scissors. You're going to pick either bear, lady, or hunter, and you're going to see if your choice beats what comes up on the screen. Remember, the lady beats the hunter, the hunter beats the bear, and the bear beats the lady. Now, when you pick your character, you must do an action that represents them. For instance, if you pick the lady, you must say, I'm a lady, and you must act like a lady. Now if you pick the hunter, maybe you can make the shape of a gun with your hands and make the sound of a gun reloading. Maybe if you pick the bear, you can make the best bear sound that you know. Rawr! Okay kids, it's time to pick your character and make that pose. Let's see what the screen shows. Three, two, one, go! If you pick the hunter, you won. Great job. Now let's see if you can answer this question. How many books are there in the Bible? If you said 66, great job. Awesome. Let's go again. Pick that pose. Three, two, one, go. If you pick the bear, great job. You won. I've got another question for you. What are the two divisions in the Bible? That's right. If you said the Old Testament and the New Testament, you got it perfectly right. Well done. One more time. Let's pick that pose. Three, two, one, go. If you pick the lady, great job. You won this round. Great job, guys. Hey, I've got one more question, and it's a difficult one. Are you ready? The question is, in what language was most of the New Testament written? Wow, that one's a tough one. But if you said Greek, well done. Hey, thanks for playing our game. Sometimes it's hard for us to do things on our own. Like when I try to make a peanut butter jelly sandwich. You see, when the first time I ever made a peanut butter and jelly sandwich, I took the peanut butter and I dipped my fingers right into there 
on my fingers, and then I tried to put it on the bread, but it wasn't quite working. What did I do wrong? Uh, did you think about using a knife? A, a, a knife? Oh, oh, a knife. I think I've got this. If I put a knife in, look at there. You see, sometimes we all need a little bit of help. Look at that peanut butter. And this is going to be so good later. You see, our ponder point today says that God is our help. And sometimes life can be challenging and there could be some tough things, but we don't have to do it on our own. God's there to be our help. Do you want God to help you? Just like I was helped to make this peanut butter sandwich, God can do that. Why? Because God is our help. Hey kids, let's review our remember verse for this week. It's from Hebrews 4.16. Each time we read it, we're gonna remove some words. See if you can follow along. Let us then approach God's throne of grace with confidence so that we may receive mercy and grace to help us in our time of need. Hebrews 4.16 Let's take away some more words. Let us then approach God's throne of grace with confidence so that we may receive mercy and grace to help us in our time of need. Hebrews 4.16 Let's take away some more words. Let us then approach God's throne of grace with confidence so that we may receive mercy and grace to help us in our time of need. Hebrews 4.16 Okay, this is our last one. Let's remove some more words. Let us then approach God's throne of grace with confidence so that we may receive mercy and grace to help us in our time of need. Hebrews 4.16 Great job. Were you able to keep up with us as we remembered the remember verse? If not, don't worry, we'll have a few more weeks to learn it. Hey, it's time for our Big God Story. You know, our Big God Story every week comes from the Bible. You know, Scripture is our ultimate authority and we can trust God's Word. This week, we're focusing on three quick stories from the Bible, from the New Testament, from Jesus' life and ministry. It's kind of cool. The first guy was a guy with leprosy. That meant that all over his body, he had these horrible sores. In fact, a leper in those times was kind of an outcast. People wanted nothing to do with lepers. In fact, the lepers weren't even allowed to live inside the city. People certainly never touched lepers. They would go around ringing a bell so that people knew to stay away. But one day... A leper fell before the feet of Jesus and he said, if you would be willing, you could easily heal me. Jesus saw that man's faith and the Bible says that Jesus did something crazy. Jesus does the unthinkable. He stretches out his hand towards the leper and he touches him and the leper is healed. Another story in the Bible is of a guy called Jairus. Now, Jairus is the leader of a synagogue. Very different. He's someone that's well respected. And yet his 12 year old daughter, she gets sick. And and Jesus is desperate to help Jairus. And he he sets out to go towards Jairus' house when Jairus approaches him and asks. But but Jesus is surrounded by crowds wherever he goes. And this crowd surrounds Jesus and they get in close and they want him to pray for the sick and and speak. And Jesus kind of on his way to Jairus' house gets kind of accosted by all these people. There was a woman who for 12 years had had an issue of flowing blood. And so for 12 years, she'd been in big trouble and she needed Jesus' help. 
she got low among the crowd and she reached out just for the bottom of Jesus' garment that he was wearing. She reaches out and as soon as she touched Jesus' garment, she was healed. Jesus stopped and even though everyone was touching him all around, he knew that this lady who had had faith had touched him and been healed. When he saw her, he said, go in peace. Once that had happened, Jesus headed on his way to Jairus' daughter. And as he got close, though, he realized the people were crying. They were weeping. Jesus was wondering, why are you guys weeping? The people looked at him and thought, you are crazy. What do you mean? Why are we weeping? We're weeping because Jairus' daughter, his 12-year-old daughter, is dead. You're too late. Jesus says, no, she's not dead. She's just asleep. They thought, Jesus, are you crazy? Jesus continued and pushed and said, let me see Jairus' daughter. And he goes to her bedside where she's lying. And Jesus says, little girl, get up. And immediately, Jairus' daughter comes to life and wakes up. It was an incredible miracle. Three miracles of Jesus. Jesus heals. Jesus didn't just heal back then, but Jesus heals now. You see, Jesus helps us. God is our help. That's so important to know as we look at these stories because each time when the people reached out towards Jesus, Jesus met their need. He was there for them. You and me, no matter what your need is today, Jesus is there for you. So what is your need today? Take a moment, close your eyes and think, how do you need Jesus to be your help today? How do you need God to be your help? He's there, he's available. Maybe you're afraid, maybe you're sad. Maybe you need Jesus to heal a friend or a family member today. What do you need Jesus to do for you? Let me pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you that you love us and you care for us. God, we thank you that you are our help. In our times of need, you are always there. Thank you. We thank you. We can trust you. Amen. Let me bless you. Here's what we do when we say a blessing. We put our hands out in front of us like we're receiving a gift. And then I'll read this over you. May you quickly sense God's presence when you call out to him. May he comfort you, heal you, and give you peace through the power and presence of his Holy Spirit. Thanks so much for joining us today. So let's start off with a short prayer. So everyone close your eyes and bow your heads. Thank you, God, for this day. Thank you for everything you have given us, for giving us peace and tranquility during this time, Lord. Thank you for providing food and for letting us be safe during this time. Protect our family, our friends, our loved ones. Thank you so much. We love you. And in Jesus' name we pray, amen.